Hey, I hope you're doing well today. I want to encourage you today with a message uh, titled, Stand in the Gap. Stand in the Gap. I'm sure as you think about your life, um, you've had people that have stood in the gap for you in one way, shape, or form. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a, um, uh, a friend, a, a close friend that has uh, stood up for you in a time that you needed someone to stand up for you. And so um, and today we're talking about standing in the gap and the gap being our relationship with God that's broken because of sin. That That's something that impacts each and every human that walks on the face of this earth. Uh, because of sin, because of disobedience, our relationship with God is broken. And so um, Sunday as we looked at standing in the gap um, in order for us to stand in the gap for someone else and introduce them to Christ we need to understand and we need to know the one who stood in the gap for us and um, second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says for our sake uh, he made Jesus to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God and just understanding that Jesus Christ who never once sinned became uh, took upon the sin of the world, the punishment of the sins of the world upon himself uh, to take the full wrath of God the Father so that you and I can be forgiven and set free. He literally stood in the gap for us, and I'm so thankful for that today. And so today we're going to say, uh, I'm going to ask you, who do you need to stand in the gap for? And if you're not following Christ today, I would encourage you to understand and to read Scripture as we study God's Word this morning, understanding that um, Jesus stood in the gap for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And and so that's the first and foremost that we have to understand who that is. And and if you are following Christ today, I want to you to answer that question of who has God placed in your life that he's leading you to stand in the gap for? And what does it mean for you to stand in the gap for that person? To dig into this a little bit deeper, we're going to look at Luke chapter 13, verse 6. And this is a parable of the barren fig tree. You see, with the parables, Jesus taught in parables, which were er earthly stories with heavenly meanings. And so he was trying to explain to people what the kingdom of God is like, who, how God interacts with us as his people. And, and this parable is exactly what he's trying to say as well. Help us understand the kingdom of God. And uh, in verse 6, he says, And he told this parable, Jesus speaking, A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it, but he found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, saying, Sir, let it alone this year also, until I dig around it, and I put on manure and fertilize it. Then it should bear fruit next year, well and good. Then, if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Um, what's amazing in this parable is talking, <clears throat> is looking at the mercy and the compassion of two different individuals in this in this uh, parable. This parable is talking about the owner of the vineyard, and and the owner of the vineyard is God. And, and the worker of the vineyard, some um, think the worker of the, the vineyard in this account, in this uh, parable, is Jesus. Um, some people think it's the, the Christians that are, that are the workers. But nonetheless, the worker of the vineyard asks and begs for another year. Please just give me another year. Another year to fertilize it. Another year to work the ground. Another year to let some water penetrate into the roots. And then we'll see if this plant grows. Somebody in your life today needs that from you. Somebody needs you to plead on their behalf and say, God, please give me a little bit more time with this person. Give me a little bit more time to cultivate them, to help them grow in you, to help them understand who you are, and 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 just give me a little bit more time. And so for you and I to stand in the gap, it takes you and I caring for those that are broken. It takes you and I actually caring for them and caring for them to the point that we do something, that we reach out to them, that we lead them in some way, shape, or form, whatever it means to, to lead them to Jesus Christ. So we have to care for the broken. We have to work to heal the broken and to work up that ground. And, and so we had a discussion last night in our men's uh, Bible study about uh, listening and asking people questions, trying to figure out where are people coming from and getting them to understand what do they believe and why do they believe it and get, getting people to um, to say that and to um, to voice those those beliefs and to voice um, those 
uh, things of uh, the, the thoughts that they have about who, what is life, what's after this life, and who is God, and, and all of that. And then that's an opportunity for us to share the Word of God with them and to share who, what, the, who God is and that understanding that there is a short time. Here in this parable, it was a year. The, the owner of the vineyard was going to give the vine dresser one year, one year to impact this person's life, to, to cultivate, to help fertilize, to see if this plant would grow. And then there's going to be a time that we have to hand that plant over to Christ. There's going to be a time that um, that plant is going to be done. It's it's time to repent. It's time to grow is done. And, and that's the same with people, is that there's a time that we will all perish. And, and, and until that time, we are given um, these days that we live on this earth to receive the mercy of God to receive the forgiveness of God and to experience his mercy. And mercy is not getting what we do deserve. And that's why I see here, this tree deserved to be cut down. Why should it take up any more ground, any more space in the vineyard? But because of God's mercy, he gave it time to, to start producing. Who in your life today needs you to step in, to stand in the gap, and to lead them to Christ. There's somebody that's waiting. I want you to be receptive and obedient to wherever God leads you this week. May God bless you and lead you as you live for him.